Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Snowbeck. Today we are going to do Unit 6, Lesson 3. But before we get started, I want to just do a quick review of simplifying radicals, or in this case, multiplying radicals. When you multiply root 2 times root 3, you just multiply the numbers under the radical sign, so you get root 6. It's as simple as that. In number 2, you would get square root 9. However, the square root of 9 is a nice number. 9 is a perfect square. So technically then your final answer is just plain old three. Take note of that. When you multiply root three by root three, you get plain old three. That will happen every time. In number three, root five times root three is root 15. So here we have a little different situation. Here we have a radical on the bottom of a fraction in the denominator, and that is not considered to be simplified. So you have to do a thing called rationalize the denominator. And the way that you do that is you multiply the top and bottom, the numerator and the denominator, by whatever's on the bottom of the fraction. So in this case, root 3 is on the bottom, so we're going to multiply top and bottom by root 3. In the numerator, we now have 2 root 3. In the denominator, we have square root of 9, which we all know is 2 root 3 over 3. And so that would be our final simplified answer. Number 5, square root of 16 is actually um, a nice number. 16 is a perfect square, so this just ends up being 3 fourths. And here, um, square root of 2 is not a nice number, so we have to rationalize the denominator. We're going to multiply top and bottom by square root of 2 this time because that's what's on the bottom of this fraction. And so we're going to wind up with 2 square root 2 over square root 4. But the square root of 4 is 2. But then look what happens here. We have um, 2 over 2 that can cancel. And so then we just wind up with our answer square root of 2. If you want to think of it as square root of 2 over 1, that's fine. Um, this will come into play in today's lesson a little bit. So let's start our actual lesson, Unit 6, Lesson 3. Today we're going to study two very special right triangles. One is called the 45, 45, 90, and one is called the 30, 60, 90. And basically they're named this because it's the size of their angles. So to start out, we're going to start with the 45, 45, 90 triangle. And take a look at this picture here. It says, use the Pythagorean theorem to find the diagonal of a square. So you know some stuff about squares. For instance, you know all the sides are congruent to each other. So if one side is x, all the sides are x. You also know that the angles are 90 degrees in a square. And that when the diagonal comes down to a, an angle, it's going to bisect that corner. And 90 divided by 2 is 45. So these angles will end up being 45 degrees. Now if you look closely, what just happened is I divided this square into two triangles, and each of the triangles are 45, 45, 90 triangles. Let's call the diagonal D. So our job here is we want to find the length of that diagonal. Well, if you look at the triangle that's outlined in red, we have a right triangle, and we could do Pythagorean theorem. We could do a little a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So the legs are x, so they go in for the a and the b. So we're going to have x squared plus x squared equals diagonal squared. Let's try to simplify this. x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. Remember, we're trying to find the length of the diagonal, so we want to get d by itself. So to get d by itself, right now we have d squared. To undo the square, we have to square root. When we take the square root of d, squared, it's just d. The square root and the square cancel out. The square root on the left side is a little trickier. What you're going to do is break it into two parts. The square root of 2 is not a nice number. We will leave that under the square root sign, under the radical. The square root of x squared, however, can be simplified. The root and the square cancel each other and you end up with x. What we just discovered is the diagonal is whatever the side is, x, times root 2. In other words, if you have a square and the side lengths are all 5, then the diagonal is going to be 5 root 2. If you have a square and the sides are all 7, the diagonal will be 7 root 2. Pretty cool. So what we've just figured out is that in a 45, 45, 90 triangle, 
two legs will be the same. Why is that? Because this angle has to be 45 degrees um, in order for the triangle to have a sum of 180. And if you have two angles that are the same, the two sides opposite of them will also be the same. And then what we just learned is the diagonal will be that number times root two. And that happens in every single 45, 45, 90 triangle. So if you're given the legs of a 45, 45, 90, and you wanna find the hypotenuse, all you have to do is multiply by the square root of two, and you'll get the hypotenuse or the diagonal. If you're given the hypotenuse, then you're gonna to have to work backwards to try to find one of the legs. And so in this case, to work backwards, instead of multiplying, we're gonna divide. So if you're given the hypotenuse, you're gonna divide that number. Whoops, if I could spell, that would be great. You're gonna divide uh, your number by root two. So again, if you're given the hypotenuse to work backwards, you divide by root two and you'll get the length of a leg. So let's try one of these. In this triangle, part A, we can see we have two legs that are X and X, which means they are congruent to each other. Now, if two sides are congruent, that means two angles are congruent. This is an isosceles triangle. The angles in every triangle have to add up to 180. So 180, take away the one corner that we know, the 90 degree corner, it leaves us with 90. And if we divide that in half, we get 45. So what we've just figured out is this corner is 45 and this corner is 45. We have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So let's solve for x. We're gonna solve for it in two ways. The first way is an approximate answer. Now, if we have the hypotenuse, we're gonna to have to work backwards by dividing by root two. So what I could do right now is just take my calculator and type in 12 divided by root two, and I get approximately 8.49. That is one of our answers. That's the approximate answer, the approximate length for x. But let's say I want an exact answer that's not rounded off. And so again, in order to find x, it's just 12 divided by root two if we're working backwards to find a leg. Now think of what we learned at the beginning of the lesson. We learned that you can't leave a radical on the bottom of a fraction. So we multiply top and bottom by square root of two. On the top, we get 12 root two. On the bottom, we get root two times root two, which is root four, but the square root of four is really just two. 12 divided by two is six. So our final answer, x also equals six root two. So we have an approximate answer and an exact answer. Okay, let's try another one. Here we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. I know this corner has to be 45 degrees because it is, has to add up to 180. And so this time I'm given a leg. A leg is four and I have to find a hypotenuse. So we know we're gonna take four, multiply by root two. Is this a simplified answer? Technically it is, it is an exact answer, but I can also get the rounded answer, which is gonna be four times the square root of two into my calculator, which is 5.66. So again, we have the exact answer and the rounded answer. All right, let's try one more of these. Um, again, I see the two sides are congruent because they're both length x, which means that the two corners have to be 45 degrees and 45 degrees. I'm going to have to work backwards. We're given the hypotenuse. So in order to do that, we're gonna take five root two divided by root two. When we work backwards, we divide. This one's really cool because something nice happens. They cancel and we are left with just plain old five. Guess what? That is the exact answer and the rounded answer. There's only one answer in this case. Now we're gonna talk about the second special right triangle. This is called the 30, 60, 90 triangle. And so if you imagine um, this being an equilateral triangle, meaning all three sides are congruent, um, and we wanna try to find the height of this triangle. The height would start here at a vertex and come down and be perpendicular to the base. Now one thing we know about a equilateral triangle is that if it's equilateral, it's also equiangular, which means if we take 180 and divide it by three, all the vertices have to be 60 degrees. And this vertex at the top 
would get split into 30 and 30. And so you can see if we take half of this large triangle, we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Now, if we split, uh, if we drop down that altitude or that height, this distance down here and this distance over here will be the same. They will be congruent. And so this whole side would be called 2x if each of these smaller parts are x. Since it's an equilateral triangle, we could also say this is 2x and this side is 2x because it's equilateral. So think about trying to find the height. Let's call it h and let's do the Pythagorean theorem. So we can take x squared plus h squared equals 2x squared. If we just think about the Pythagorean theorem and taking half of this triangle, the 90 degree angle, uh, the 30, 60, 90 triangle. Now there's not much we can do with x squared. There's not much we can do with h squared, but we can do something with the 2x squared. 2 squared is 4 and x squared is x squared. Now notice we have some like terms. I can get my x squareds together. So if I subtract x squared from both sides, I'm gonna be left with h squared on the left. Now 4x squared minus 1x squared will be 3x squared. And again, I'm trying to solve for the height, so I wanna get h by itself, so I'll take the square root, and the height would then be, the square root of three is not a nice number, so we'll just leave that under there, but the square root of x squared is x. So the height of this triangle would be x root 3. Now here's what we just figured out. Take a close look at the 30, 60, 90 triangle. So this is 30, this is 60, this is 90. What we have is this side is x, the hypotenuse is double or 2x, and what we just figured out is the height would be x times root 3. And this is true for all 30, 60, 90 triangles. They will all have that same ratio. So here's what we know. The smallest angle is opposite of the shortest leg. So this over here would be called the short leg. And let's just say the short leg is x. If the short leg is x, the hypotenuse, which is across from the 90 degree corner, has to be double the short leg. So we'll call that 2x. And then this side over here, which would be across from the 60 degree angle, this side over here, would be called the long leg and that would be x times root 3, kind of like the height of that equilateral triangle. So let's talk through this. If you're given a short leg, how do you find the hypotenuse? You multiply by 2. Hypotenuse is double the short leg in a 30, 60, 90 triangle. What if you're given the short leg? How do you find the long leg? Well, then you multiply by square root 3. If you're given the hypotenuse, you're going to have to work backwards to find the long leg. So this is kind of interesting. What I would do is if you don't know the short leg, get that first. So if you're given the hypotenuse, first divide by 2 and then take that short leg distance and multiply by root 3. So it's gonna be sort of a two-step process to go from hypotenuse to long leg. Divide by two, then multiply by root three. If you're given the long leg, how do you work backwards and get the short leg? Well, working backwards, you're gonna to have to divide. Oops. So if you have the long leg, you're gonna divide by root three to get the short leg. If you have the hypotenuse, how do you work backwards and get the short leg? You're going to have to divide it in half, or divide by 2 to get the short leg. And then finally, what if you had the long leg and you had to work around to get the hypotenuse? Again, it's going to be a two-step process. So start out by dividing by root 3, and then that will give you the short leg. Once you have the short leg, then multiply by 2. It's a lot to remember, but I think as you practice it, you'll get better at it. So here you can see we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. The hypotenuse is y. The short leg is across from the 30, so the short leg is over here, x. And then that means 12 is the long leg. 
Now, rule of thumb is if you don't know the short leg, find that first. So we're gonna try to solve this for x and y. So let's solve for x first. So if we know the long leg and we wanna work backwards and find the short leg, think about your 30, 60, 90 triangle. The short leg, if that's x, the long leg is x times root three, and the hypotenuse is double whatever the short leg is. So what I would do is I would take that long leg, that 12, and divide it by root three to work backwards. You're gonna take you're gonna take this and you're gonna divide it by root three to get rid of that root three so that you can just have plain x. Now, a couple of things. One is we could type this directly into our calculator right now and get a, an approximate answer, which would be 6.93 if I type that into my calculator. Or we can take 12 divided by root three and get an exact answer, which we have to rationalize the denominator. So we're gonna multiply top and bottom by square root three. On top, we get 12 root 3. On bottom, we get root 9, which is also 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So 6.93 and 4 root 3 are the approximate and the exact answers for x. All right, now we're going to find y. So once we know x, to find y, we just double our answer. So if we have 6.93 times two, we can get an approximate answer for y. That will be about 13.86, or we can get an exact answer. So we can take two times four root three, which is eight root three. So these would be your approximate and exact answers for y. Let's try a couple more. So. On part B, you can see we have the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always double the short leg. So if this is um, a 30, 60, 90 triangle, our 30 degree angle is up here. The short leg is across from that. So to get X, we're just gonna take the hypotenuse and divide it by two to work backwards. So X ends up being five. We don't have to go any further than that because that is the approximate and the exact answer. Now, once we know X is five, to get y, we just take that short leg and we multiply by root three. Five root three would be the exact answer. We can also um, type that into our calculator and get an approximate answer, which is 8.66 for y. And last but not least, let's do part C. You can see here that we have another 30, 60, 90 triangle. This is our short leg over here. Remember to get the hypotenuse. What we're gonna do, let's, let's call this uh, hypotenuse. Um, to get that, we just double the short leg. So maybe I wanna call the hypotenuse x, okay? So to get x, we're gonna double the two root three. So we wind up with four root three is the exact answer, or that's approximately 6.93. So that's the hypotenuse. And let's just call this long leg y. So to remember to get the long leg, um, we take that two root three side, that short leg, and we have to multiply by root three. Now, root three times root three, remember, is root nine, or think of it as just three and two times three is six. There we have it. All right, so next I want you guys to try unit six, practice three. If you have questions, just let me know and have a great day.